Uh, hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to be running 105 Tube, which is a YouTube player app, uh, on a couple of PowerPC Macs. Two of which are actually below the minimum system requirements for Mac OS 10 uh, 10.5 Leopard. But uh, we're going to give it a shot anyway and see what kind of quality they can play and where the fun really stops. So the first machine that I want to take a look at here is this PowerBook G4 Titanium. Just so we can get a baseline for the specifications, this one is below the minimum requirements for Leopard. It is a 667 megahertz with only half a gigabyte of RAM. And uh, yeah, 512 megabytes is the bare minimum for Leopard, so let's hope uh, memory is not really the problem here. It probably isn't because 10.5 tube, in case you don't know, is just basically a web app version. It sort of emulates or reports as being iOS 10. And uh, here it is. So now that we are on, on the PowerBook Titanium 667 with half a gigabyte of RAM, let's take a look at a YouTube video. For comparison's sake, we might as well pick the same video. And why not go with the famous Big Buck Bunny that was all the rage back in the day when HD content on YouTube was becoming very, very, very relevant indeed. All right. So let's just open it up. Again, this machine is below the minimum requirements. Also, just a little bit of a side note. I actually got this idea from a video that I watched a couple days ago from uh, Action Retro. Pretty nice YouTube channel, by the way. Check it out if, you, uh, if you're into the same kind of stuff as, uh, as I am. Definitely not bad at all. Right, so the audio is playing, but there's no real video going on. We'll reset it back to zero. We'll check the video quality that it has set. It's at 360p. Let's try 240. We'll also do a full screen here, at least as far as it will go. And let's see if this is smooth. It is not, and it is still buffering. So it would seem that this is definitely a little bit out of the realm for this uh, machine in particular. We cannot pause the video because it is stuck on that buffering wheel in there. And let's see if we Take it back to a small window, if that makes a difference. I can't click on anything. It's completely hung. <laughs> I know that feeling. Right. That's not a family-friendly remark at all. Okay, let's give this another shot. I have a number of PowerPC Max lined up for this test, by the way. I have two laptops and two desktop machines. After this, I have my PowerBook G4 titanium, or not titanium, aluminum. And uh, we also have two iMacs, an iMac G4, that's also below minimum requirements, and an iMac G5, which would represent one of the best case scenarios for the PowerPC Macs. This machine does not appear particularly happy about running this video, though. Let's see if it remembered the 240p note and went back to 360. Go back to 240. Press the play button. In terms of video, this is not really a watchable experience. So no, the PowerBook G4 Titanium 667 megahertz is definitely a no-go for watching YouTube, even through 10.5 tube. Let's move on to the next Mac. 
And here we are on the PowerBook G4 Aluminum. This is a 1.25 GHz PowerPC G4. The reason I'm not testing my Mac Mini G4 is because it has the exact same CPU. And it has one gigabyte of RAM, so this one has slightly more memory to play with. Power profile is set to better performance. It was also set to that, by the way, on the titanium. I have tried to set up all the systems as much as I could to be equal or whatever. All right. This is a much chippier machine though, in Leopard, so... I give this a good chance of possibly running 360p on this video. Then again, maybe not. Let's see. Okay, it's at 360p. I'll just let it sit for a little bit. And continue. That's pretty good. Yep, 360p is totally watchable on this, even with the big player. Let's torture it, let's go 720p. It probably needs to buffer until next week. It's trying. This also has considerably more powerful graphics than the uh, titanium did, so perhaps that's helping a bit. This is obviously playing through I or not through iTunes, through through QuickTime Player. Every now and then it's playing pretty smoothly, and then it just completely stops. Right. See, we can make it smaller again. It does seem to like that one bit. It's a bit buggy, I suppose. Or it's just pegging the CPU and not responding to anything. Yeah, it's that. It's beach balling already, so. So 360p is watchable on the PowerBook at a 1.25 gigahertz clock speed, so 720p is totally not doable though. Definitely need something more powerful. Possibly even that iMac G5 or even a Power Mac G5 that would play 720p fine. Possibly even 1080p, but that's not available. 720p is the best you will get in this scenario. All right, let's move on to the desktop machines. First off, the iMac G4. And here we have the iMac G4. This is the original model. This is the 15 inch from 2002. It has a 700 megahertz power PC G4. This machine does have a gigabyte of RAM, but uh, we're still below the minimum requirements for Leopard, which include an 867 megahertz G4. And of course, for Tower RAM, we do meet that requirement. This image was a lazy copy from my PowerBook G4 aluminum, with some small tweaks to uh, aid performance a little bit on this old machine such as no animations and all that, because it only has a GeForce 2 MX graphics card. And it does not support core image at all. It does support Core Extreme, but that's about it. It's also set up to use the satellite speakers, the Harman Kardon ones. And they are very nice indeed. They can also be used on a PowerMac G4 MDD, but it's only these two machines, either an iMac G4 or the PowerMac G4 MDD. They're the only machines that can use the speakers. Please don't beach ball. Right. Okay. So on the Titanium PowerBook, we saw that 360p was way out of its league and 240p wasn't even possible. We'll try again. This is 240p, full screen. This is way better than a PowerBook, wow.
that's pretty much a perfect 30 fps for sure or 25 even that's perfectly watchable we'll set it to 360 it's probably too much for it but we'll try right. and continue let's see how it copes with that To be fair, this is pretty much like 720p on the aluminum powerbook, which is a machine that almost has twice the clock speed of this thing. You know, if you're watching a video that does, that does not have a lot of movement, this is probably somewhat okay, but uh, very fluent, it is not. But still, 240p works fine. That's absolutely watchable. Especially on a low resolution screen like this. This is only 1024 by 768 display. So it really doesn't matter that much when the video is just 320 by 240. So, you know. But uh, that brings us on to the last Mac that we're going to take a look at in this video, which is the iMac G5, the most powerful PowerPC Mac that I currently own. So let's take a look at that. And here is the iMac G5. This is the very first model, the August 2004. This is the 17-inch display model. We have a 1.8 GHz PowerPC G5 and 2 GB of DDR memory. And this thing is running on a 10,000 RPM WD Raptor drive. Yeah, fun fact, those PowerBooks both had SSDs in them, but my iMacs are all still rocking hard drives. The yeah, iMac G4 is a pretty fast Seagate 80 gb 7200 RPM drive. It's still fairly potent. And this one has a, uh, yeah, a WD Raptor 10K drive. I had it laying around, I had a couple of them that I uh, got from my previous employer a couple of years ago. And uh, I've been holding on to them since and never really found another good place to put them in. So I put them in the iMac G5. But I digress. We're here for the YouTubes. Let's open up 10.5 tube here. And we'll go to the same damn video for testing purposes. It was a bit sluggish at the start. It's, it's like that on every Mac we've seen so far. We'll set it to full screen. We'll let it sit at 360p first. Let's see how that goes. It has already finished buffering, so that's good. Yep, 360p is okay. Let's do the torture test. Waiting for the buffer again. It just completely stops the video. Sound is fine, but there's nothing happening on screen. And we have to wait for a beach ball. That's better. I'd say that's somewhere between 10 and 15 FPS. Maybe hitting 20 at best. Again, if you're watching a video that does not have a lot of movement, this is probably pretty watchable. You also get a lot of 
graphical fidelity obviously the image quality is, is miles better at 720p than it is at 360. It's a shame that there's no 480p option because that's typically pretty good in general as a middle ground if you either, either have a slow connection or really slow or underpowered computer. That's Epson sadly and 105 tube. Maybe it's something that might be added in the future. We won't know for sure. But for now, uh, I guess uh, we can safely conclude that it is now possible to still watch <laughs> YouTube videos on your PowerPC Mac, even with, with all of these various options of the past that are now no longer here, like uh, Mac tubes and UView. Especially UView was excellent. But sadly, all of those have gone. And now all we have left is 10.5 tube, which is still somewhat actively being developed. So I'll leave a link in the description to where you can download this uh, nice little application. It'll also work on uh, Snow Leopard. It's not Leopard exclusive, but this is basically the only way for now that you can watch YouTube at somewhat uh, acceptable frame rates on a PowerPC Mac. That is at least, I would say, as a bare minimum, a 1.25 gigahertz uh, G4. And it's definitely recommended if you want to watch these videos more to go for a G5 machine if you can, or a dual CPU G4, like a pretty maxed out MDD or a top end Quicksilver even. But uh, other than that, it was a fun little experiment. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.